Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In today's video, you'll learn how to add animations to your character controller and all the fundamentals about animations in Unity. Let's get started. To find animations, the most popular website is Mixamo. It provides free-to-use characters and animations. Select any character you like and click the download button. For the download settings, choose FBX for Unity as the format and T-Pose as the pose. Download the file and import the FBX into your project window. Many of you might get an issue that when you drag the character into the scene window, it doesn't have any materials. To fix this, go back to Mixamo and download the same model, but this time select the .dae format. After downloading, extract the compressed file to find the textures folder. Drag and drop this textures folder into the same location as your character, and the materials will now be applied correctly. Next, click on the character FBX file, and you'll see the character import settings in the inspector window. It has four tabs. The model tab contains model-related settings, which we don't need to change at this moment. And in the materials tab, you can extract the model's materials and textures, but we already have them. In the Rig tab, set the Rig type to Humanoid. The generic type is for other objects or non-humanoid thing. For avatar definition, select Create from this model. The avatar is basically the bone structure of the character, meaning which game object corresponds to which bone. If you downloaded the character from Mixamo, it's already configured and you don't have to do anything except apply the changes. However, if you downloaded the character model from somewhere else, you probably need to configure it yourself by providing each bone reference. In Mixamo, there can be exceptions. For instance, this model doesn't have a left hand, which is why we are getting a warning here. But fortunately, this character already has a right hand. It just didn't have fingers, so Unity didn't pick it up. We'll simply drag and drop the right hand into its place, apply the settings, and we're good to go. Now, replace the previous body with this character and adjust the capsule collider accordingly. Next, let's download some animations for the character. Head back to Mixamo and navigate to the Animations tab. Search for your character's name to find all its native animations. While you can use other animations, it's better to use your character's native animations for a consistent look and feel. Start by selecting an animation. The very first one you'll need is the idle animation. Choose the animation and hit download. Select the FBX for Unity format and choose the without skin option since we already have the character model. You can adjust the rest of the settings if necessary, but it's best to keep them at default. After downloading the animations, import them into your project. Select each animation file and in the rig settings, change the animation type to humanoid. It's important that the animation type matches the character type. For the avatar definition, select Copy from Other Avatar and choose the character's avatar we created earlier. Next, navigate to the Animation tab. Tick Loop Time to ensure the animation repeats continuously and Loop Pose to ensure seamless looping without any noticeable jumps. Leave the other settings unchanged for now and apply the settings. You can duplicate the animation outside of the FBX file and store it separately allowing you to edit its name or the animation itself, or you can simply keep the original. Now let's download other animations, such as walking and running. Use the same settings as for the idle animation, but also tick the in place option. This prevents the character from moving with the animation, as we will control the movement through our script. Download both walking and running animations with in place option ticked, then import these animations in the project and apply the same settings to each of them. Now, for the jumping animation, we need three parts, the jump up, the landing, and the free falling. It can be challenging to find perfect animations that blend seamlessly with each other, and even if you do, there's no guarantee they will fit your character's look and feel. Therefore, it's often better to create custom animations for this purpose. If you can't create custom animations, the next best option is to use animations from Mixamo. Mixamo typically provides complete jump animations, but we need these in parts. Luckily, Mixamo has an option to trim animations. Select the jump animation and trim it into parts. The jump up part should be a very short length because the jump animation will play right when the player hits the jump button. 
We don't need the initial part where the character is preparing to jump, we need the part where it starts to lift off the ground. If you want the starting part included, you'll need to delay the jump in your code so that the starting animation plays first and then the character lifts off the ground. The in-air animation will be a looping animation, ensuring that your character continues to appear as if they are free-falling for any length of time without interruption. Trimming only the free-fall part usually doesn't work well for looping. Instead, download a single frame from the free-fall animation. Make sure this frame follows immediately after the jump-up animation to avoid any abrupt cuts or transitions. This will ensure a smooth visual experience when the character transitions from jumping to free-falling. Lastly, for the landing animation. Similar to the jump-up animation, we only need the final part of the landing sequence, just a few frames, as this will be played when the character hits the ground. So download only the end portion of the animation, where the character's feet make contact with the ground. If you prefer to include the initial part of the landing animation, you would need a custom ground check function and increase the detection distance using Raycast to start the animation earlier. However, we won't cover that in this tutorial. We're focusing on the basics, so you can have a solid foundation and explore advanced techniques on your own. After trimming and downloading the necessary parts, apply the same settings to these animations. Remember the jump up and landing animations should not loop, only the freefall animation should be looping. Before moving on, I want to let you know that this tutorial project will be available for download on our Discord server after the second part of this video is released. So, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Now, to implement these animations, your player character needs to have an animator component attached. Firstly, the animator requires an animator controller, which I'll explain shortly, and the avatar you want to animate. Drag and drop your character's avatar into the appropriate field. Next, you choose appropriate animator's update mode. In normal mode, the animator updates in sync with the update call, matching the current time scale. This means if the time scale is changed, the animations will also change. Animate physics mode updates the animator in sync with the fixed update call, keeping it in lockstep with the physics system. This is useful if you're using physics-based character controller. Lastly, Unscaled Time Mode updates independently of the time scale. This mode is useful for animating UI elements at normal speed while using modified time scales for special effects or pausing gameplay. Set the update mode according to your specific needs. For our character controller, Normal Mode is appropriate to use. Next, let's look at the different culling modes. Culling modes determine how animations are handled when the camera isn't looking at them or when they are not visible to the player. The first option is Always Animate, which isn't recommended because it continues to animate even when the character is completely out of view. The second option is Cull Transform, which is the default mode. In this mode, retargeting, inverse kinematics, and the writing of transforms are disabled when the character is not in view. This means the animation will not be played, but all the calculation will be keep on going, so if the character comes back in the frame, the animation will continue. Finally, there's Cull Completely, where the animation stops entirely when the character is not in view. Choose the culling mode that best suits your performance needs. For most scenarios, the default Cull Transform mode has a good balance between performance and animation fidelity. And please keep in mind that the visual you're seeing isn't real, it's just for demonstration purposes. So if you don't see the animation being affected by different culling modes, then don't worry, the culling effect occurs in the background automatically. Now to make the animations work, we need an animator controller. Create an animator controller and name it whatever you like. Drag and drop this controller into the animator component on your player character. Double click on the animator controller to open the animator window. This is where we control which animation to play at what time and define transitions between different animations. The animator works on the principle of the state machine pattern. A state dictates the current behavior the entity follows, and we can transition from one state to another, playing its respective animations. To create a new state, right-click in the animator window. This new element represents a state, and it will automatically connect to the box named Entry. These boxes are called nodes. The entry node indicates the starting animation that plays as you enter play mode. The any state node allows transitions to any state without needing a direct connection from a specific state. 
Lastly, the exit node is used to exit the current state machine. Now name the first state idle and drag and drop it into the motion field of the idle animation. Below you can see various options to tweak your animation. First, there's the speed setting, which allows you to adjust the playing speed of the animation. Change it if you're not happy with the current speed. You can also control the animation speed dynamically by ticking the multiplier parameter. But currently, you won't see any parameters because we haven't created any yet. I'll explain what a parameter is shortly. Next, motion time allows you to set the start time of the animation. This can also be controlled by a parameter if needed. The mirror option, when checked, flips the animation, which is useful for creating left and right variations of animations without needing separate clips. This too can be controlled by a parameter. Cycle offset adjusts the starting point of the animation cycle, ranging from zero to one, where zero is the start and one is the end of the animation. This can be controlled by a parameter as well. Foot IK, when checked, enables inverse kinematics for the feet helping to keep them properly planted on the ground during the animation. This is an advanced feature, so we'll leave it for now. Right defaults when checked ensures that all animated properties reset to their default values upon entering a state. Let's understand this with an example. Suppose we have a sphere and two animation states, A and B. State A changes the position of the sphere from point X to Y, and after the position change, it transitions to state B which changes the sphere's color to red. If the right defaults option is ticked, then on transitioning from state A to state B, the position of the sphere will reset. However, if the right defaults option is unticked, the position won't reset during the transition. Next, let's add the walking animation. In the animator, create a new state and name it walking. Drag and drop the walking animation into the motion field. Then create a transition from the idle state to the walking state. If you play it now, it'll automatically transition from idle state to walking state in some time. Because if you click on the transition between idle and walking, the exit time is enabled. So when idle animation is complete, it transitions to next state. I'll explain more about this in some time. Now, on the left side, you'll see two tabs, layers and parameters. Layers help to run multiple animations at the same time, such as one for the hands and another for the legs. But this is an advanced topic, so we'll leave it for now. Move to the Parameters tab, where you can create parameters of type Float, Int, Bool, or Trigger. These parameters help control transitions from one state to another by acting as conditions. Create a Boolean parameter named Is Walking. Next, select the transition from Idle to Walking. Now you can set the condition for the transition to happen. Select the parameter we just created and set its value to true. This means the transition from idle to walking will occur when the is walking boolean is set to true. With this setup, the walking animation will play whenever the is walking boolean is true. However, it won't transition back to the idle state because we haven't set up a transition for that. Therefore, create a transition from the walking state back to the idle state. Select the same parameter as the condition, but set its value to false. Now, the character will transition back and forth between the idle and walking states based on the value of is walking boolean. Above this, you can see a lot of properties. The first option is has exit time. This determines that the current animation should finish before transitioning to the next one. Since we don't want any latency, untick this option. And now you can see there is no latency in transitions. Next, in the settings, the exit time shows how much time the previous animation should play before transitioning to the new one. This setting will only be available if has exit time is enabled. When the fixed duration setting is checked, it means the transition duration is specified in seconds. When unchecked, the transition duration is normalized between zero and one Zero means start of animation, and one means its ending, making it independent of state length. Next is the transition duration specifies how long the transition should take. If fixed duration is checked, this value is in seconds, otherwise it is a normalized value. Next is the transition offset, which specifies an offset for the transition, determining at what point in the new animation the transition should start. This value is normalized, ranging from 0 to 1. 
The next option, Interruption Source, determines what other transitions can interrupt this transition. This is useful when you're using trigger-based transitions and have a complex animator state machine setup. Let's say we have four states, A, B, C, and D. If the transition from A to B is triggered, and then you trigger the transition from A to C, and the interruption mode is set to none, then the transition from A to B won't get interrupted and will complete. However, if the current state mode is selected, the transition from A to B will be interrupted by the transition from A to C. But not all transitions can interrupt the A to B transition because of the ordered interruption, which is ticked by default. So, if you had triggered the transition from A to D, then it wouldn't interrupt the A to B transition here, as it has low priority. However, if you untick ordered interruption, the transition from A to D will interrupt the transition from A to B. Keep in mind this is happening when current state mode is selected, which allows any transition from current state that is A here can interrupt the transition. Now, if you are using next state mode, then no transition from state A will be able to interrupt the A to B transition. However, if you trigger any transition from state B, it will interrupt the A to B transition. And the same priority rule applies here if you have ticked ordered interruption. Next, there are two more modes, current state then next state and next state then current state. These modes are useful for fast-paced games. If you select the current state then next state option, and you are transitioning from state A to state B. Now if all other transitions are triggered at the same frame, then all transitions from state B will be ignored straight away. Because transitions from next state, that is B here, are given lower priority, and the transition from A to C will take over according to the priority order. Conversely, if you're using the next state, then current state mode, all transitions from state A will be ignored, and the transition from B to C will win. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next part, we will see how to implement all these animations through our code. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.